The advent of large round bale technology in the early 1970s revolutionized hay harvesting, handling, storage, and feeding to all kinds of livestock. This technology spread throughout the world and became a major development in hay production for the next several decades. It all started in 1892 when Hugh Lubbin of Nebraska, with his sons Melchior and Omo, began working on a mobile machine that could pick up straw, roll it into a round bale, wrap the bale with rope, and throw it into the field. The principle of bale formation in this machine was based on rolling up the incoming mass of straw in a loop of moving endless belts. It is noteworthy that the first round baler was not intended for harvesting forage. According to the inventors, the machine was supposed to produce straw logs for heating houses and fueling steam engines. Therefore, the bales were small. The machine was then used for haymaking, and Lubin's youngest son, Omo, patented it as a baler in 1910. The Lubins had great difficulty in getting these machines into production. They founded the Lubin Baylor Company in Beatrice, Nebraska, but mass production did not occur. Eventually, Alice Chalmers, seeing the potential in the technology of rolling straw and hay into bales for forage, purchased Lubin's patent for the invention in 1939. By 1941, Alice Chalmers had built six experimental round balers and tested them in the Midwest with great success. Then, in 1947, a commercial model of the machine, called the Roto Baller, was introduced to the market. In the Roto Baller, unlike the Lubin's machine, the bale chamber was formed between two rows of wide, endless belts, with six flat belts in each row. The process began with a layer of hay being picked up by a chain and slack conveyor. It was then grabbed and pressed by two rollers and pushed through an inlet window into the bale chamber. After the layer reached the two closing rollers, the lower branch of the belt slowed down and sagged under the weight of the hay. When the deflection reached a critical value, the increasing layer of hay was captured by the counter movement of the upper belts and the rolling of the bale began. The bale was tied with twine. For the period of operation of the binding device, for three to four seconds, the movement of the tractor had to be stopped. The finished bales fell out onto the field. A little later, the rotoballer number 10 appeared with an additional upper conveyor. It sent the windrow to recirculation while the tying machine was working and now the tractor did not have to stop while the bale was tied. In the first three years of production, more than 23,000 roto ballers were built, selling for $935. By the mid-1960s, when production ceased, more than 75,000 had been sold. Until the 1970s, no one except Alice Chalmers mass-produced round balers. The Roto Baller was a major aid in the rescue operation launched by the U.S. government to save thousands of people and more than one million cows and sheep trapped in snowdrifts in Nevada during the winter of 1948-49. to The mission, called Snowbound, involved dropping bales of hay from airplanes to hungry animals. 156 cargo flights were made, dropping 4,000 tons of hay. The Alice Chalmers Company responded to the government's call and manufactured the necessary number of rotoballers for the rescue operation. The advent of round bales of hay, which had the property of being stored well in the open air, gave cattle farms the idea of trying out year-round grazing. 
This all-season system included wintering the cows on small round bales left in the field and on the accumulated summer and fall regrowth. The bales were made with Alice Chalmers rotoballers. The bales weighed about 40 to 50 pounds and kept well when left in the field where dropped. Early experience showed that cattle on the year-round system maintained satisfactory weights. Calf birth weights were similar to calves from the barn wintered cows, and overall herd health was excellent. In addition, labor for feeding was markedly reduced, no bedding was required, and the costs and problems of manure disposal were eliminated. Further research into the loose housing system by several universities showed that hay could be made more efficiently into larger bales than those produced by the rotoballer. These studies played a huge role in the creation and further development of the large round baler. In the summer of 1966, a baler appeared in the United States that could make bales much larger than the Rado Baller. They were over 5 feet in diameter, weighed about 600 pounds, and had a density of about 5 pounds per cubic foot. The machine was designed at the University of Iowa by engineering professor Wesley Boo Kelly and graduate student Virgil Haverdink. It was a purely experimental model, built more as a dissertation topic. During testing, the machine produced only a couple of dozen bales, but it is still called the first large-size round baler. In fact, this is hardly true. At that time in Australia, a locally made baler called the Econ Fodder Roller had been in successful operation for several years. It produced round bales of hay, weighing between 250 and 400 pounds that could be stored in the field. The Econ Fodder Roller was patented by designer Philip Avery in 1961 and was introduced to farms in 1964. The Econ Fodder Roller did not lift hay from the ground, but rolled a windrow directly onto it. This was done with a raking device in the form of an endless chain and slack conveyor with attached spring teeth. When the bale reached the required size, the conveyor frame was lifted and the bale was left on the field without being tied up. In 1970, while touring farms in Australia, members of an Ohio University delegation saw the Econ Fodder Roller in operation. They took pictures of the machine to show it to colleagues and to assess its potential for forage research in Ohio. Soon after, one Econ Folder Roller was purchased by the university. The machine arrived in time to be used in the late summer of 1971. The resulting bales were suitable for field storage and winter feeding in Ohio conditions. Ohio scientists said the bales they produced in August 1971 were the first large bales of hay rolled in the United States. Well, probably after the ones made by Boo Kelly and Haverdink. The results of the experiments were popularized in every possible way on expert forums and in numerous publications. Field demonstrations of the Australian baler were held for agricultural machinery manufacturers to attract attention to the new type of hay harvesting equipment. Avery's method of forming a bale by rolling the windrow directly on the ground was used in a number of subsequent machines. The most famous was the Hawk Built 480, which was introduced in 1971. It rolled the windrow like the Australian Econ Fodder Roller but the bale was tied with twine. Notably, this machine used a hydraulic system with its own oil pump driven by the tractor's PTO. Hawk Built was the first company in the United States to produce large round balers for commercial use. However, it should be noted that the Model 480 was not without its many shortcomings. Also in 1971, Vermeer Manufacturing of Pella, Iowa, introduced the Model 706, then a year later the Model 605, which produced bales 5 feet wide and 6 feet in diameter. The bale wrapping mechanism in these machines was vaguely reminiscent of the first Luaban round baler. It consisted of a row of endless belts, forming a single branch, passing through a system of rollers. The belts formed a loop, in which during operation a layer of hay was twisted into a bale. As the bale formed, 
The size of the loop was increased by making one of the rollers movable and connected to a tensioner. This design, known as a variable chamber baler, set the direction for the development of similar machines for many years to come. Another type of large round baler was the machine with a fixed chamber with different methods of rolling the bale. Farmers began to master the technology of large round balers unusually quickly, faster than any other agricultural machinery. This was facilitated by their many positive qualities. The round balers allowed farmers to may hay with less manual labor. In addition, the tightly packed round bales prevented precipitation from getting into them, helping farmers preserve the quality of hay longer. In turn, manufacturers of agricultural equipment required less metal and labor to produce them. By 1975, 15 companies in America and Canada were producing large round balers. The significance of the commercial development of the round baler was recognized by American Society of Agricultural and Biological Engineers. The Lubinhay baler has been designated a historic agricultural engineering landmark, and a plaque was placed on the Alice Chalmers Roto baler, preserved in Pioneer Village in Minden, Nebraska, in 1993. The Vermeer Large Round Baler received the same honor in 2021.